you will be embarking on in the first semester of the first year of your course um, at Sydney. Next slide, please. Okay, just a little bit about our vision. Our vision at the Faculty of Dentistry, I guess, really recognises that we are a global institution and that we're really interested in attracting and um, maintaining and assisting students through dentistry um, who are really the, the, the best students. So we're really interested in um, high achieving students, students who are really interested in studying dentistry and um, go on to a range of things either to become a clinician, which is most, what most um, graduates end up doing. Some people go into research and some people, of course, go into um, an academic career. Um, next slide, please. Okay, just a little bit about the, the Faculty of Dentistry. It was the first established um, dental school in Australia and it is very well recognised around Australia and globally. We have a few campuses where our teaching happens. Um, when you're in first and second year, you spend most of your time on the main campus of the university, as well as in this lovely um, 1930s building that you can see on the screen, which is called the Sydney Dental Hospital, which is on the fringe of the city. The other campus that you increasingly spend more time in in the senior years is within um, a large tertiary hospital in the, I guess, the, the, the geographic centre, I guess, of Sydney and its suburbs, and that's called Westmead Hospital. You'll also spend some time in metropolitan as well as rural community clinics, both in the state of New South Wales and even um, further abroad in Australia. Next slide, please, Kimberly. Okay, so just a little bit about our Doctor of Dental Medicine program. So it's a four-year program. It's graduate entry, it's what at postgraduate level. And when you receive your um, degree qualification, what it means is, of course, you are registered to practice dentistry in Australia. Um, but also for Canadian students, um, it means that you're eligible to sit for your um, board exams. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so the next few slides really um, provide an opportunity to go through a bit more detail about what you would be doing um, during the first few years of the program. Okay, in, in year one, I've already mentioned um, one, of the, one of the things that we think is pretty um, great about our program is that you will commence learning your um, procedural skills right from the beginning of year one. So you will immerse yourselves in sim mainly simulated learning environments, but also clinical environments right from the beginning of first year as well as spending time learning the, the, the dental procedural skills, you also spend a lot of time learning um, in life sciences. Our life sciences program is integrated and it's based on systems. It's a problem-based learning curriculum. So you don't study the, the discrete disciplines of anatomy, physiology, etc. by themselves. You'll be studying it in an integrated problem-based way. In the DMD, there is a, um, a research unit of study whereby in, in the first year you will learn some under, underpinning knowledge about research and then in the senior years you will be going on to conduct a research project and that's within the, the framework of the um, DMD. Um, next slide, please.
So year two, year two, you will be doing more and more simulated and clinical learning. And um, for example, you'll be learning how to, to um, do local anesthesia. You'll be continuing on your restorative and endo courses, um, periodontics, prosthodontics, as well as um, there's still there's still quite a big focus on the integrated life sciences in years um, that continues on from year one. Um, next slide, please. So once once you I guess in a way our program is um, sort of it's not really broken up into two sections, but you can essentially consider years one and two to be um, sort of together and years three and four to be together because when you move into year three, you really shift up a year in um, your clinical experience. And the, the tutorial and, and lecture time really reduces and you, you basically spend almost the whole week um, undertaking clinical um, patient care as well as some simulation to more advanced techniques. Of course, you'll be continuing on with your research project. And at the end of year three, we have a, um, an elective unit of study, which is really the only time in the program where you're able to choose your own learning and direct your own learning to something that you wanted to do. And a lot of students use this as an opportunity to travel abroad, to participate in a voluntary program, a voluntary dental program or other medical program. Um, and students that do participate in this um, generally describe it as an extremely worthwhile um, part of the program. Um, next slide, please. So year four, Year four again, year four, so year four is the last year of the program. Um, it really is a time for doing lots of clinical activities, both in the um, clinical schools as well as in the community clinics. Um, we're doing some more advanced restorative and implant work, as well as completing the research project to round off. And as I said, at the end of year four, then at graduation, that means um, registration. Next slide, please. Now, Caroline's going to talk about the admission criteria. So, we'll just hand you over to Caroline. Okay. Hi everyone, um, my name is Caroline and I'm the um, admissions administrator for dentistry. So um, if um, I'll just briefly take you through um, our admissions criteria. Um, so basically um, the first thing um, obviously is the, the, the main um, the overview of our criteria would be to that you have a satisfactory um, performance in your um, previous bachelor's degree. So we require your, your GPA. Um, so for um, Canadian and American students, it's at 2.7 um, on a scale of 4 for the GPA. Um, and then obviously then the, the second criteria there is that you need to have a satisfactory performance in your GAMSAT, um, sorry, your admissions test, which would be the MCAT or the um, CDAT or the um, DAT, which is the dental admissions test. Um, we also, for the de Doctor of Dental Medicine, we also require that you have a, um, a sorry, a, a biology prerequisite so that you would have covered um, your subject of the biology. Um, so in, in the admissions guides that will be published um, next Monday, the 31st of March, there is some more information on the biology prerequisite, um, and you can refer to that. So you just need to have covered um, some, some components of biology. So for instance, cell biology, um, 
there is um, cell biology, anatomy. Um, so there's a list of them there. If um, if your if your degree had not got um, biology embedded in it. Um, also, um, the other part is the satisfactory performance um, in your interview. So we do hold online interviews as well. So if your GPA and your GAMSAT score um, are successful, then you will be invited then for interview. Um, and then um, based on your interview score, then we will, we will make the offers. Um, is there another slide there, the next slide? Um, okay, so I'll just go into more detail there for your um, for your GPA score. So you must achieve at least a credit average in your studies to be eligible for the admissions to the DMD. Um, applicants um, with overseas qualifications such as USA and Canada, the GPA is 2.7 out of 4. Um, and then for your, um, sorry, just I'm just reading from the, the guide, you will be able to access this. Um, so you need to, um, international DMD applicants using the DAT or the CDAT, they must have achieved a minimum of score of 15 in each section. Okay. Um, then also moving on then to the, um, the DAT and the CDAT admissions. So the US Dental Admissions Test and the Canadian Dental Aptitude Test can be used for international DMD entry. Um, they must achieve a score of 15 in each of the sections to be, co to be um, considered for the interview. Um, so that's um, basically the, um, the admissions test and then your GPA is 2.7. We, we will move on to the timeline then for the admissions. Um, so basically, we'll, um, our online applications open on the 1st of April, um, and then the, um, the MCAT, so the last date for applicants to sit the MCAT test um, will be around the 31st of May, um, and then the international applications then will close on July the 7th, um, which then we'll, we'll be sending interview invitations out shortly after that, and then we'll hold the um, interviews in July and August. Um, so that's basically it. If there's any questions, oh, there's, there's just another bit about the um, student life, which I'll take over to um, talk about. So our our student um, population for DMD um, is 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 almost rough. It's, it's it's roughly half international, half local students. So we have a fairly large number of international students. Um, the typical age for our applicants is in their early 20s, around 23 or so. It varies a little bit from year to year. Um, we have roughly, roughly there's a sort of 50-50 gender balance in our um, program as well. The, the Dental Students Association um, is a very big part of the student life at um, our, for our students and they organise a lot of social events. Um, the oral health students are also included in the um, association. There are some um, some international student association, um, or there is an established um, international dental student association within this um, issue DA. Okay, I guess we're up to questions. Does anyone have any questions, Kimberly? Yeah, let's go ahead and get started on some questions. Um, I know, so kind of what I did yesterday is I went through um, and uh, kind of asked people, but it looks like some microphones aren't working. Um, so for all of you attendees, if you could type in your questions into your question box, then I can kind of go through 
um, each of the questions. So I know that we already have a couple from uh, Tyler Reed. Um, so, um, so his first question, are there any changes to the admissions policy for the 2015 intake? The admission, um, the, do you want me to repeat the question, Kimberly? Yeah, so are there any changes to the admissions policy for the 2015 intake? I think he's referring to um, any changes from 2014. Yeah, no, the GPA still remains the same. The uh, MCAT scores, they still remain the same. It's a minimum of 15. Um, 50, well, uh, 15 would be quite, that would be the, the cutoff. So to be successful, um, you know, to get an interview, you're kind of trying to aim for around the 19, <clears throat> the 19 mark. But we still do have our minimum of 15. Um, the only the only slight change we brought in this year was the biology prerequisite. Um, originally, we based it on our subject biology one double o three, um, but now we've um, we have just um, based it on um, it, it's a it's a previous it's the prerequisite of one double o three, which is our biology one double o one. Um, so it's it's just it's basically it's it's more basic. So we're not requiring as many units of as many components to be complete. It's a minimum of one of the six components as opposed to three. Um, so for so for this year and for next year as transitional years, we're accepting both units of study, um, or equivalents for the to to meet the biology prerequisite. That's really the only uh, the only very change. slight change. Mm -hmm. The only variation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there is a link on the website that will give you the information. So um, you can you can log on to um, onto our website and we can just click in there to the link that will will give you the information on um, the prerequisite. Um, you can find that link on um, page thirteen of the of the admissions guide twenty fifteen. And as I said, that will be published on um, Monday, the um, 31st of March. Great. And then just so everyone knows, um, um, by the end of the week, we're going to be sending you some information on the opening of the dental applications as well, um, because um, applications will officially open on April 1st, so the day after um, the admissions guide comes out. So Global Links will yeah. provide you information, um, you know, and we're in pretty close contact with um, the dentistry faculty, so, you know, if there's any, you know, specific questions, we can always reach out to someone for you guys. Yeah, definitely. My contact details and email are um, on the back of the guide, so if there's any questions, just um, send me an email and I'll respond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we'll send you the exact web address um, and we'll send you the information guides um, via email because we have all of your contact details. Yeah, no worries. Um, okay, so it looks like um, we have a um, student um, whose name is um, Sania and um, they have said uh, they're a foreign trained dentist from India. Um, and they would like to um, have a degree that makes them eligible to practice um, in Australia. And it sounds like they don't have a postgraduate degree, but a undergraduate degree. What would be the best option for this type of student? Our Australian Dental Council um, runs an examination program for international dental graduates for them to um, gain registration in Australia. So I would suggest that that would be the best avenue to, um, to pursue rather than necessarily undertaking a, um, a dentistry course in Australia. So that's the Australian Dental Council. So if you could look, look that up on your search engine, um, you'd be able to find that. Our um, university doesn't have any um, articulated entry into any of the years, so it's it's a, I guess it's like a complete package. So um, the four years of the program are the four years of the program. We don't have any entry into particular years for particular um, categories of, of people. So 
that would be that would be your your best avenue to pursue. Mm -hmm. Great. So the next question we have from Armin, and um, he's asked, "Do you know what the GPA mm -hmm. and the CDAT score um, was for Canadian students admitted into the DMD program uh, last year?" So do you have like a average or kind of standard that you saw from your um, accepted Canadian students? The, the the GPA the GPA is a threshold. So if you meet the GPA requirements, that I guess is is the first stage of the admission process. Um, the next stage looks to the admission test score, mm -hmm. and then the admission test score is combined with the interview score to give you a final ranking. So as Caroline's already mentioned, to, to be um, competitive, then you need to have scored around 18 to 20 or more in each section of the um, US DAT or the, or the CDAT. Yeah. Great. Um, the next question we have is, being a US citizen, how can I practice dentistry in Australia after graduating uh, the DMD program? Well, um, you, you'll only get a student visa for the entirety of your, your course, which will be four years. Um, and then after that, it's totally up to them. Um, and they're on their own. So if they want to practice dentistry, Within Australia, they would all, yeah they would all they would need to cut they would need to source some alternative work visa, um, and they'd obviously be able to practice um, in 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 Australia, um, once they have their work visa. Okay, and then I do believe that there is a um, an immigration visa um, kind of process that if students. Uh, attend a program that's more than two years long, um, they can apply for a two-year work visa. Um, so that might be a possibility as well once they sit the exams. Okay, yeah. We're not yeah. Familiar Kimberly, with I'll, just, I'll just say that, um, you know, that's, that's the sort of immigration status now. So, mm -hmm. so students should actually look at the, the immigration website, you yep. know, closer to the time that they yeah. actually need to exactly because they do change their requirements quite a bit and uh, we we really can't predict yeah. um, what's going to happen in the next year or two so yeah. it's all it's all based yeah. on um, it really is based on the demand as well so if there is a, a demand for a, a certain um, if there's a demand for dentists or engineers then they will obviously the, the visas will be easier to to get but um, yeah, they'd have to just look into that themselves. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's exactly right. And so what a lot of times we do, um, you know, students a lot of times do ask about immigration, and you're, they're exactly right. We need to make sure that we're working with the Australian Department of Immigration, and um, that'll kind of be the student's responsibility to make sure that they have the appropriate visas. Um, mm -hmm. Great. So the next question we have is, um, can you talk about um, Canadian students trying to get into the University of Sydney? Um, so do you see a lot of Canadian students applying? I think that's kind of where this question is going. Yeah. Um, basically, we have um, 90 places um, on our program each year at the moment. Um, so it ha has varied throughout the over the years, but last, just our 2014 intake was 45 of them were international, and I think 44 of them were Canadian. <laughs> wow. 43. <laughs> so yeah, we do have a, an extremely um, large Canadian um, base <clears throat> on, on our team at the moment. Great. And I think the, the, the supporting reason for that, I guess, is that is the mutual recognition of the um, DMD qualification from Australia by the Canadian um, Dental Board so that you're able to go in, into the first um, round of the board exams as though you had gained your qualification in Canada. Mm -hmm. So it's quite an attractive um, thing, I guess. Yes, very attractive for sure. 
Um, great. Well, the next question, um, as a Canadian student, can I submit the American DAT score instead of the Canadian DAT score? So yes. I think, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can, yeah. Great. Um, and then we already answered the question, how many Canadian students were accepted last year? So about 43 or 44. And then there's another question about the average GPA of the Canadians, but um, like Carolyn said, uh, the 2.7 is a threshold. So my understanding, Carolyn, is that as long as you have above a 2.7 GPA, you get into the next round of exactly, interview, yeah. et cetera, right? Yeah. So, yeah, well, as long as, yeah, as long as they have achieved the 2.7 and above, mm -hmm. they're automatically um, go into the next part as such. So anybody with below 2.7 will won't be considered at all. So right. then anyone with 2.7 and above, then we start looking at their um, their scores, their DAT scores or their MCAT scores. Um, and then the, we'll pick the highest ranking out of them. And then they also go forward then for... Um, they all go forward for the interview, so we take it. It's a combination of their interview score and their um, admission score. Right, and that's fifty-fifty, right? The um, admission score and the interview—they're kind of um, weighted fifty-fifty. Yes. Yep. Yes, they are. Great. Um, one question we have is: What is the difference between the your four-year dental program versus the other Australian five-year programs? Will you still graduate both programs as a dentist? The five-year programs are usually undergraduate, so they they start at, at an undergraduate level, so it's five years. So ours is essentially um, a seven-year program because you need to have a three-year minimum three-year bachelor's degree before you can apply, and then you move on then to dentistry, which is four years. It's that graduate entry. So the five-year one will be an undergraduate program. Mm -hmm. And just to confirm, um, graduate entry means that you must have a bachelor's degree. So one of yeah. the entrance requirements for this doctor of um, dental medicine will be that you have um, a bachelor's degree and you've attended a three or four year institution. Yeah, exactly. And you've got uh, your GP, you've maintained a credit average GPA. Right. Um, this question is, how is the admission score valued in terms of percentages? I don't know. Oh, um, the GPA score. It's probably the GPA score in terms of a percentage. I think that's oh, 70%, um, right? Uh, it's a credit. is 65%. Okay. Is, that, is that the question, Kimberly? Yes, I think that's what it is. So yeah. what, what it means is, the average mark that you score on your units of study in your bachelor's degree needs to be a 65% or above. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, um, okay. I think that those are all the questions we have. Can I just add in something that I, I didn't mention before and I think it's probably worth mentioning, um, is in relation to offers. Um, so the first round offers are made in August, soon after the interviews. But I just wanted to draw um, your attention and the, the potential applicant's attention to, we make offers um, up until mid-December. So if you're not included in the first round of offers, um, there's always the possibility, I guess, that you might be given a, um, a later offer. And as I said, we, we give them up until mid-December. So uh, just to sort of draw your attention to that, um, that, that's, I guess, fairly late to be able to be arriving at a, um, a program for February. Um, but we do make offers up until mid-December. Right, and I will say we did um, we did get a few late offers um, this past year in at the end of November, um, middle of December, and so um, some students were pretty excited. And I do think that they all ultimately accepted their offers. Um, so if that does ultimately happen to you, we will definitely assist you in making sure that um, you 
you get everything organized as quickly as possible. Um, so we have another question. If my undergraduate school did not give a GPA and my graduate school only grades half of my courses, um, will this be an issue or will you be able to still assess the application? The, the University of Sydney International Office will calculate your GPA mm -hmm. based on your um, transcripts. Yeah, so they just need to send all the transcripts over to the International Office and they will calculate that for them. Mm -hmm. Great. And then how do the interviews work? Will they be via um, Skype? Yeah, via Skype. So they will be, um, they, they'll be contacted via email um, about a, their, their, their time and their date. Um, and then it's basically a scenario of um, interviews. It's, I think it's um, five, five stages. So there will be five different interviewers. Um, is it five? five or seven? So there's five yeah. stations. Yeah, five yeah. stations. Yeah. And the, the interviews, um, so the interview scenarios are very situational um, scenarios. So they, they, the, the candidates will be um, asked to read a, a, a scenario and often it's, um, you know, it could be an ethical dilemma or some, some um, community situation and are required to um, make a response based on that situation. So it's, it's not the sort of interview where um, you know, you're asked you know, why you're interested in studying dentistry. It's, 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 it's more to see how you think about um, various problems, I guess. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and they usually take, um, it's usually about 20 minutes or five, or five, five minutes in each one. So yeah, 25, 30, 25 to 30 minutes um, on Skype. Oh, that's not bad at all. Mm. Um, we have another question. Uh, is there a specific bachelor's degree that students um, need to have in order to be admitted? Um, not really. We just require, as I mentioned, just the human, um, sorry, the, just the biology prerequisite. But as long as um, most of our applicants kind of come from a science background, like a medical science, um, some of them come from pharmacy, radiology. Um, but you know, if, if somebody has, has done an arts degree or business degree and has not done any biology subjects, well, they would need to they would need to do this before they need to take up an, another subject, a six, cre six, um, cre six um, credits, to um, yeah, to, to be eligible then to apply. Mm -hmm. So, so we don't require any particular bachelor's degree, and we have applicants who have done you know a complete range of bachelor's degrees. And you can take a biology um, unit as a non-award unit as well, mm -hmm. if you've already completed your bachelor's studies. Yep. And we've definitely had students do that in the past. Um, if they just haven't quite met the biology requirement, um, then they mm -hmm. take an additional course as a non-award seeking student. Um, so that's definitely not out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, would a master's degree help in getting accepted into the program? No. Mm -hmm. so, we, so we're really looking at um, the admission criteria really focus on the bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. Great. And most students, um, there, and I will say just from the applications that we receive, most students typically have um, a Bachelor of Science degree, um, a Health Science degree. I mean, we've even seen, um, you know, like exercise science students. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, having um, a specific degree, um, you know, is definitely not an issue just as long as you're meeting those prerequisite courses. And, and you know, a lot of times health science students are, quite prepared for the DAT and the MCAT and the CDAT, so um, the majority of students that we're seeing are coming from a science background, but it's definitely not a, you know, not mm -hmm. a requirement, as long as you meet the I think prerequisites. That's right. Um, I guess from, from our perspective, we see there's, there's more variation in our um, domestic students' academic background compared to our international students' academic background. Um, we get more 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 domestic students who 
haven't got a science background. Um, and I guess that, that's just a, a little bit of a difference. Um, but what, what we find is that applicants who come from a completely non-science background um, do take a little bit longer with their learning in the life sciences, um, but it doesn't take them all that long to catch up to their peers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it looks like we have um, another question. If I have, um, if I've had ADA issues and accommodations uh, throughout my academic career, do you assist with that? And is there a specific department which handles this on campus? Sorry, Kimberly, what was the issue? So I think it's um, the ADA, American Dis Disability Association. All right, okay. Um, yes, the University of Sydney has a very comprehensive disability service mm -hmm. yep. who assist students who have an ongoing um, disability. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, and then um, on your application, um, you don't have to state, you know, what your ADA uh, accommodations are, but once you receive an offer, you'll need to get in touch with the disabilities office. Correct. Um, okay. If an applicant has written the CDAT more than once, is the most recent highest or the average DAT score considered? Yeah, you can't combine. You can't combine admissions tests. You have to use. They, they, they need to be within the last two years, and um, obviously you would just choose your best one. Right. And then um, also, is an applicant who has written the DAT more than once looked at unfavorably? No. Well, no, because you would just submit your most recent and highest mm -hmm. um, DAT score, so we would not know whether you had... Right. So it's really up to the applicant to yeah. put forward their best score. Right. And you'll send your scores directly to Global Inc. So we do require the official DAT score, because um, we do need to certify uh, the official score for the university. Um, so then you'll just work with the... Um, the testing center um, to make sure to get your scores submitted directly to the Global Links office. Great. Well, I think we had some pretty good questions. Oh, we just had um, we had one last question come through. How highly is the manual dexterity um, test looked upon in the scoring for the DAT? It's, it's not. We don't um, we don't acknowledge the, the the last section, the manual dexterity. Um, parts that's just in the admissions guide as well. There's some information on that, um, but yeah, that's not taken into account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Great. Okay. Well, um, we have some information on this final screen, um, the University of Sydney website, and then also our um, email address. Like I said, um, we will be sending you an email um, here in the next couple of days, kind of following up with you all, um, making sure that you have all the proper information and that you're ready to start the application process. Um, I recognize quite a few of your names, so um, I know we've kind of all been in touch before, so feel free to um, send me an email and we can definitely chat through some questions. And uh, we're excited to help you with your applications. Um, anything to add? on your end? No. No. Well done. Great. Okay. Well, thank you um, to the University of Sydney for um, joining us for this webinar. Uh, we're really excited to um, see how everyone does this upcoming intake, and um, we look forward to working with you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye.